still alive. So this video is gonna seem a little bit disjointed because all of it was filmed before this whole coronavirus thing. And this second half is being filmed on uh, April 22nd. So well into it. Since I'm gonna begin making preparations to move this bike out of here now, which um, I was kind of holding off on, on account of everything. I felt like there was no real point. But um, considering the whole month passed and we're still deep in this, And considering we got another month to go, and who knows how many more months after that, etc. You know, I'm like, might as well just do this now because I have nothing else to do. I did uh, that hour-long video showing how to run the bike off the M unit and how to cut down the harness and whatever, but I, I kind of skimped on like the lighting aspects. So it's gonna jump back to when I filmed the first half, which was like about when the previous build episode came out. And then it's gonna jump back to this. Now this is how the seat pan mounts to the, the subframe. I have two wing nuts on either side. So I got one right there and one right there. So the bracket is attached with like a lock nut to the seat pan and then on the side, that's how I remove it without tools. Alright, so I don't think I have to go over the how to make the bike run because obviously I dedicated a whole hour and a half to that. So I'm just going to go over like the lighting, uh, stuff like that, kind of like the M unit features, all those different things. Because I mean, it started off kind of neat, but as you can see, very quickly became spaghetti. So we might as well start from the front, right? This is my speed sensor. So what I did was I took a piece of aluminum bracket and I just cut it. And I just made a bracket and one of these uh these bolts this one actually has a magnet inside of it Although I might need another one to kind of bring it out more But you're supposed to epoxy this magnet. It just stuck to it because these bolts are steel So I might just double stack it and then epoxy it just so it could stay But I can't calibrate this speed sensor right now because I can't take the bike anywhere I can't get it up to speed to calibrate it. So I got these uh, rage 360 turn signals on both sides and they work pretty good because you can see them from each side of the headlight at the front and they're pretty bright too. Then the headlight is that Moto Demic headlight. So you have a passing, a passing light. So if you just press the button once, it'll do a pass. If you hold it down, it's supposed to turn off, but only if, um, it's like I said to Woody, if the ignition is active, it does it. So I can't turn the light off right now but high beam, low beam, and then it'll turn off. This is the tail light. It's an integrated LED, so those, those corners on the top, on the left and the right, those are for the turn signals. There you go. There's also an integrated plate light under there. The LED turn signals on the dashboard light up with the lights all around the bike, so. The two in the front, two on the dash, and then two back here. As I mentioned before, this red light is the oil pressure light. So since the engine is off, we got no oil pressure, which is how it pretty much should be. But once you turn the bike on, this light goes off. This light, the green light, was um, instead of neutral, is actually the low, low fuel light. So it'll come on basically at about a gallon, a gallon left in the tank. For the brake light, I didn't hook up the rear brake light, but the, the front brake light works. Nice and bright.
horn is right down here. This controls the headlight, this controls the horn, two turn signals. This one over here in this corner is a starter, but there's no gas tank hooked up, so it's not gonna start. And then this one right here controls the gauge. The speed, trip, auto, RPM, time. If you wanna like make any changes, then you cycle through by pressing one uh, quick press. And say you wanna like change the speed unit, you hold it. You see a bar go across the top. So I'm gonna change it to MPH and then hold it three times. There you go. Oh, the high beam light works also on the dash. That's the blue light. So it's Turn, turn, high beam, fuel, uh, oil pressure light, and then gas level. So I don't have a neutral light, but that's what I signed up for. Uh, starter relay is here. This is the hot side. That's the side that goes to the starter. That's that right there. For the ignition, I'm using the M lock, which I located right here, just to hide it. All these wires down here are kind of hanging, but that's because I haven't, like I, I've been having to take the bike apart a little bit. So like I haven't like tidied it up uh, up here, like, you know, zip tied it to something, which I did last time. But um, if I do that and then put the tank on, you can't even see these. So, I mean, right now it's kind of droopy because like I said, I've been taking it, taking it apart, you know, doing tests and all that. So I haven't tidied that up again. Now, I mentioned before that the bike won't charge unless you set up a charging light. That would be this light right here. So like, all I did was basically did the D plus connection, which is the blue connection from the alternator, attached it to um, one of the charging lights that came out of the dash. So I just kind of like spliced it together, uh, wrapped it up and then kind of incorporated it into a wire and then sent a 12 volt wire up through here into um, output aux uh aux 2 so aux 2 right now is power powering um the motoscope mini is powering that that charging light the uh gas gauge and also the oil pressure so i got four outputs going there and to power the motor gadget the motoscope mini you have to use a uh, one amp fuse which is this right here so there's a fuse inside of there and it's the same story with the M lock. So you need a fuse for that, one amp, and also a fuse for um, the moto, the motoscope. Cause you have to protect those tiny wires. Cause they'll pop like nothing. Everything else is pretty standard. Oh, also, I have the um, radiator. This is the radiator button right here. So let me turn on the ignition. So ignition is on. If I press this button, the fan comes on. If I hold it, the fan goes off. Now that's, the fan is hooked up to aux one. So that's the purple wire right there. So it's hooked up to aux one, but I got positive going to the alternator and then another positive going up to the M unit. So that's, that's this right here, going up to the M unit. Um, and then I have another, I have a negative. And then for my negatives, I got one going from the negative terminal to the chassis ground. And then another one going up through here to the negative on the M unit. And then from the positive on the M unit, I have a cable going to the starter relay. 
So that's the hot side of the starter relay. And then as I mentioned before, this is coming down to the starter. Now, since this, this whole plate is grounded, because this, this actually makes contact with the plate, like these, these ground uh, terminals on the M unit, this plate is grounded. So I have a, a, also have a cable going from the plate to the frame itself right there. So that's where a lot of my grounds are. That's where they had it from the factory. Like a lot of the grounds throughout the bike, they just terminal, they just terminate all right here. So yeah, basically everything to do with the lighting is as you would think. So the switches all over here, all go into the inputs on this side and then they go to the outputs. So uh, all, this, all the things necessary to start the bike come out of here. Got left left signal, left turn signal going to the back. Left turn signals going to the front, which are the LED and also the actual turn signals. So you just gotta use the same output, kind of like that. You could probably do it a little bit neater, like splice them all into one wire, but I want them to be removable separately, you know? This, this is kind of a cramped space, so you have to sacrifice like mounted like demountability for the sake of just having room to put all these things because this is a real tight setup so yeah i'm gonna put the gas tank and everything back on hook up everything and then start the bike so i can show you the uh oil pressure light going out i can show you the fuel the fuel light coming on and also the charging light going out which indicates that the bike is in fact charging Everything is hooked back up. The charging light is on. I start it. Oil pressure light goes off, so that means we got good oil pressure. So the main thing I didn't really get to cover last time was the uh, Moto Gadget app. So basically when you use the, M the MRIDE app for Moto Gadget, you get to use, you get to like log all of your projects. So it comes with a demo bike. Um, looks like it's kind of even like, I don't know, designed after a K-Series based on that swing arm and all the other stuff, which is kind of ironic. But uh, you go to whatever project is yours. I can't configure the Speedo. Um, Calibrate the M unit just means like it'll cycle through all of the things that are plugged into the M unit uh, just to make sure everything works and stuff and then teach the speed center. So to actually connect to your bike, you have to turn on Bluetooth. Once, once you actually connect to the bike, you can uh, view the uh, voltage of the battery. This is actually the battery out of FZ1 because I actually killed the lithium ion battery that was on this when you uh, select one of these outputs, you can actually turn them on on the bike. So right now the bike is off. There's no power. The ignition is off. I got the key here, but I ain't, I ain't turned it on yet. So aux one for me is um, the radiator. And the fan turns on. Hit it again. Turns off. Uh, Aux 2 is a bunch of lights around the bike. Yeah. Lights, um, motor gadget, the charging light over here. Somewhere over here, there it is. You can turn it off. Uh, they don't allow you to do the ignition yet. I don't know why, but like if you try to hit the ignition. Well, not the ignition, the ignition works. <laughs> I meant the starter, so the starter doesn't work if you hit starter. It'll say, this motorcycle cannot be started, blah, blah, blah. Um, turn on the lights. Meanwhile, everything else is off because it's just turning on. It's all it's doing is turning on that output. Hit the brake light. on and the turn signals see turn signals are both on both on the bike as well
it's kind of nice to like basically see if everything on the bike works without having to turn the bike on and also usually i'll just give the horn a tap just to make sure like i still got battery you can see the horn is still working so that's just like the like the test um to test the outputs basically but you can actually configure a bunch of things on the M unit as well. So hardware pairing, we already did that. That's what you have to do to get the um, the bike set up on your on your phone to begin with. And it shows you all the steps to go through that. So like, you don't really need me to show you that. But um, M unit settings, basically it, you, you can tell the M unit which um, type of controls you're using for the handlebar. So if you're using all buttons, you could do configuration A. If you're doing like switches, maybe a couple switches in there, like the high beam, low beam, you could do a switch. Um, maybe a toggle switch for the blinkers, which is usually what most bikes have. So if you're doing something like that, you could configure it to run like that. But my uh, setup is all buttons, as you know. So buttons, buttons, buttons. That works just fine. Next thing is a tail light. Now, um, it's kind of weird, right? Because some tail lights have two wires, some tail lights have three wires. So you got ground. Um, power, which is basically the running light, and then uh, the brake light. So you got like two different settings for one uh, tail light. But if you have a simpler setup where it's just a tail light with two wires, you can basically run a, a one wire tail light. So what it does is it modulates the um, the output of the LED to kind of like fake a tail light. So if you want to do a one wire LED tail light. We could do a bar, which is, uh, you know, the, um, the strips that you find on most cafe races. We could do a bulb, but I just have a basic LED tail light. So that's all I need to do. So for this LED tail light, that's not quite a strip. You could set it up like this. But if you do have a strip, you could do tail light bar. And if you have um, just a regular halogen bulb, then you could set it up just the same way with the single wire tail light. And if you want to do it the uh, typical way, then standard is fine it's easier to do but then again that, that brings the issue of it also modulating the license plate light which is you know i don't really care about that as long as it's on if it gets brighter <laughs> that's fine with the blinkers you can set up an automatic cancel after a certain time threshold so if you wanted to turn off after 10 seconds 15 seconds and if i guess you've taken a long turn maybe 50 seconds no need to no need to run that just switch it off maybe when i get on the road And this is all within the app. This is all software based, so it's really, really cool. You can set up like, you know, like when you, how, if you buy a certain taillight with, with the brake light, you get like a strobe effect. So like, if you want it to pulse when you hit the brakes, you can do something like that. So modulate, blink, blink eight times and then stay on, blink twice and then stay on for one sec. Light stays on for three seconds and uh, five hertz, emergency brake light. So I, I have permanently active, which means it just, the brake light just comes on when you hit the switch. But if you set it to like blink, for example, I'll show you what that looks like. I'll turn on the ignition first. So you get that blink effect. You can also set up an alarm, which is uh, built into the M unit. So basically the M unit kind of detects, I guess, like movement, because it has the GPS um, in it. So. Position light basically just means being able to use the blinkers as a uh, well, position light. But to put it more simply, it's basically how I have my FZ1 set up where the front turn signals are always on. They blink when I turn them on, but at night they're always yellow, yellow and bright. So you can have them deactivate it, which is what I have, or you could turn them on to 50% brightness, which I guess you can't do 100 because when it blinks, it's gonna do 100. So turn that to 50. Let's take a look at the bike. So that's what 50% position light looks on, looks like. So you can have these running for the whole time, which you can't see right now, but at night. So the fronts are lit. Hey, the backs, the backs are lit too. It'll it'll look like this instead. So activate. Now watch it, which I think is pretty sexy. <laughs> With this, you could um, choose how you want the light, the, the low beam to come on. So you could either set it to when you turn the ignition on, when you turn the engine on, 
only started off when when you manually um when you manually hit the button when you turn on your garage light i guess they have like a like a a separate product where you have a garage light that's kind of synced with your bike which is pretty cool also you could do it when you hit the uh, start button so the engine doesn't necessarily have to start but if you hit the start button it'll turn on but i have it on ignition lock so let me turn it off still light is off because the bike is off i hit the ignition light comes on you can also set um your auxiliaries so for my auxiliary, since my auxiliaries, um, as a matter of fact, to make it easier, let me just activate them for you. So I'll go to this. Um, so my auxiliaries for my lights are auxiliary two, and also the the moto the moto uh, scope mini. So I'll activate that. And what comes on is the oil pressure light, the fuel level light, the moto gadget. I, I, I never get this right. The motoscope mini and uh, the charging light. Aux two. And so what I have it is, is uh, active with ignition. So you could set it as different things. So ignition after, after you start the engine, a button, a switch or um, fan delay and i think this has something to do with the fan I, I don't know i'm not too sure about that one but for auxiliary one that's my fan so my button for my fan is right there so that's the fan button so i just reach down and hit that button and then the fan activates but for the uh, other one is a switch so if you want to run a switch then you could just change it to um switch aux one now, since I'm running a button, obviously I'm using button. <clears throat> when you work with a button, you just press it once and it activates the auxiliary, and then you hold it for like a second and it turns off the auxiliary. So that's how I'm running a fan. You could also run a kickstand switch, which will basically, which will basically um, make it impossible for the starter to be, to be turned. That's the only way it really works. So it won't kill the bike. It'll only just basically make it so that the, the starter can't turn. You could also set up a parking light. I guess that helps you find your bike and if you can't find it or whatever. Keyless Go, you could do Keyless Go, which basically turns your phone into the key, but I already have this. This is something, something totally different. So this is the M-Lock, but Keyless Go is basically to where you don't even need that. You can just use your phone, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna mess around with that because my phone could be dead and then what, you know? You can do vehicle data. Basically everything that you put in yourself, um, Zero miles, obviously, sadly, unfortunately, but a couple running hours, basically it adds up everything. Like it, it, cal it, it calculates everything, which is uh, pretty impressive. Statistics. <laughs> uh, well, driving time, that's a lie. You could also um, transfer the vehicle to a new phone if you want to. But yeah, this app is this app is amazing. Like it lets you uh, basically configure everything you could possibly want. I mean, when I turned the bike on after installing the lights, I was kind of confused because some things worked, some things didn't. But generally speaking, if it doesn't work at first, then you could configure it in this app, and you you more than likely be able to get things to work. So your turn signal, uh, headlight, brake light, all that stuff. So basically, uh, the reason why I'm, I finally got around to doing this is because, once again, I'm, I'm gonna be taking the bike out of here, finally, because, like I said, I waited around for a month. I mean, this whole thing began on the 21st for me. And I'll get, I'll get into it in another video, but that's when it really began for me, because that's when I got furloughed from my job. That was on the 21st slash 22nd. And um, I was like, okay, well, I'll just wait around no point in bringing the bike out now because there's nowhere to go really so then they extended it out to may 15th like the stay at home order which is not even like a hard stay at home it's just like you know limit your outside if you go outside wear a mask wear gloves you know all these different things it's not really a hard stay at home because i don't know how they would even enforce something like that 
So I've been out maybe a total of like five times within the last month and a half. Um, I've been out much. I'm just like a bit bored inside. So I was like, well, I have nothing to do. I can't really get a job because there's no point in getting a job right now. So I was just like, well, might as well just get this thing done. Although I ran into a problem because this frag clutch for the starter is not engaging. And that's a common problem on K-Series bikes where the sprag clutch would just stop gripping. Where I mean, if the step one is basically to just run some oil, some engine treatment, so we could clean out the gunk that makes it stop gripping. And um, if that doesn't work, then you just gotta clean it out. But I'm hoping that it's just because the bike has been sitting here for so long and that the engine, the oil can't really circulate that far up because the, the sprag clutch is all the way in the back at the top. The oil pump is down here, so. When you just got the bike sitting there, you know, starting it over and over, cutting it, starting it, cutting it. I mean, it spins around and it develops these deposits and um, oil doesn't get up there much if you don't ride the bike. So I'm hoping that's what the problem is. You know, I'll just rent out, put some, uh, some, uh, some, engine, some engine treatment in there, some detergent, throw it in there, start the bike up, you know, bump start it, ride it around, and then just let it kind of wash out everything and then change the oil put in some, uh, I think they recommend Mobile One. Right now I'm running Castrol or, or M's oil, what is it? Yeah, I'm running uh, Valvoline, <laughs> I was way off. I usually run Castrol, but I didn't have any at the time, 2050, so I'm running Valvoline. So they, they advise that you run Mobile One. So that's, that's the plan, right? So once I get the bike out there, put it in a storage unit or put it in a garage or something, but just take it out now because, you know, just sitting around doing nothing i'm not even making content i'm just kind of like in my feelings i guess so yeah i mean this th finishing off this video was like step one to doing this so this is going to be a good source of motivation for me so yeah once you finally see like a video of me riding this bike then you'll know you'll know what happened you know i brought it out but this electronics video is probably going to go up today maybe tomorrow depending on when the video renders it should be a light video because it's just kind of me yapping don't need no music no cuts craziness like that you got boogers in your eyes what's that about really this video was only that much useful for, i guess cur curious people maybe those who are also building a bike a k bike so this video should help fill fair few of you out maybe call some curiosity also just to tell people that i'm still alive <laughs> i mean I'm, i've been posting on instagram every now and then you know week to week but youtube I, i've been kind of mia because, like I said, motivation, just just chilling, just kind of waiting this whole thing out, hoping things will go back to normal. But at a point, you just got to adapt, right? So let me stop yapping because uh, the point of this video was way done. So anyway, just watch the illustrator. I'll see you whenever I see you. Stay safe.